Hello, and welcome to the series premiere of Barely Passable. Now, today, I am going to be painting a Skaven Plague Monk from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. I know there's not many tutorials out there, and I really feel like it's going to help a lot of people now. And I'm going to show you how to paint these guys with red robes instead of green robes. If you want, you can go with Castellan Green. I'm going to be using Blood Angels Red because I like the dark red color, but it's going to be exactly the same um, if you use green or whatever color you want to use. But I recommend a dark color for the robes. Now, we are going to start with the Contrast Paint Gillum and Flesh. Now, this is going to be used for the face, feet, and hands, and pretty much the non-furry areas of the skating. Alright, make sure you wipe your paint off a bit on whatever you're using, because you don't want to have too much and have it drip all over the guys. And also, you want to make sure you get the right amount. Alright. Now... Very carefully, I will start painting this guy. Luckily, most of them don't have their eyes visible because they've got their cloaks on and the eyes are really hard to get. All right, the tongue, for now, I'm just gonna go with Gilman's Flesh. If you wanna be a little bit more um, detailed, I recommend maybe you mix some Corex white with Blood Angels red, and that's for the tongue if you just want to have it look a bit nicer. But if you're like me and you just want a cheap, easy start, then this is probably what you're going to want to do. This is actually my first Age of Sigmar guy. I, um, I've painted others. I've painted about three other Skaven Plague Monks right now, but I'm still relatively new. But I do know that it's not as bad as it seems at first. Right now, I've just got to finish the feet, and then we'll move on to our next color. Oh, also, I recommend using Gilman Flesh for the tail. If you want, you could use some kind of pink. But if you just want to go an easier option, you can just use Gilman Flesh. All right, I finished the tail. Now I'll get the feet. The feet can be slightly difficult, but I wouldn't worry much about the base. If you're not, if you want, you can go more into the base. But in this video, I'm not gonna go much into the bases because they really aren't the biggest deal. It's really the character that you care about. And also, don't worry too much about the feet, because they're really, they're kind of covered by the cloak, and no one's really going to notice them too much. Alright, I think that's good enough. I might go back over a bit later with another layer, but that should be good for now. Alright, next, we will be using Gore Grunt of Fur for the visible parts of fur, like on... Here, or here. Alright. Get the brush. You really, I, like I said earlier, you really want to be careful how much paint you've got. Because if you have too much, it can start to drip onto the rest of your guy. And that's not going to look good. This guy doesn't have much fur, luckily. And they all have at least a bit of visible fur, though. And it's important to have this color. It's not really the kind of thing that you can just not do. It just doesn't look great. Alright. Now, it looks like I missed the fingers a little bit on one side. So I'll go back over a bit later off camera with some more Gilman flesh. Now next, we'll be using Skeleton Horde for the teeth and possibly the claws. And if you have some kinds of 
paper or something, you also want to use skeleton hoard. gonna eat teeth. I'll go with the nails a little bit too, but that's not the big just deal. Alright, now I've got that easy step done. Now for the blades here, we're going to be using lead belcher. Now I personally like using a combination of two of these blades, but the other option is a woe stave, which is just pretty much a staff and one of the blades. So if you are gonna use the staff, then use wildwood for the staff color. All right, now later in the video, I'm gonna have some extra options to just make the guys look a little bit better and we'll add a few extra touches to the blades. The blades are possibly the easiest of the steps, and I just find it's not difficult to make it look nice. And lead belcher is definitely great for everything metallic, really. Now, you can do the handles um, with wildwood if you want, but I'm just going to use lead belcher for the handles because it's really not the biggest detail. Plus, I'm trying to keep this tutorial simple for people who can't really afford too much. Alright. There we go. Now, I'd like to mention I am kind of an amateur still, so I'm not perfect. But with this tutorial, you will be able to get them enough to bring into battle and people won't be laughing at you for a miserable failure. All right, now that I've finished with lead belcher, we will move on to the next paint. Now after lead belcher, we are ready for the robes. I'm using Blood Angels Red, like I said earlier, but if you want, you can use Castellan Green for a green robe, like shown in the pictures from Games Workshop, or whatever color you want. You could do a dark blue, I've seen dark purples, it really doesn't matter. Now, you, you can be a little bit less careful with this because a lot of the Skaven guys will kind of be okay if they've got some red on it. Like, if you get some on the blades, it kind of... Sorry about that. I accidentally knocked over the camera while opening my paint. Gotta be very careful about that. The paints can be hard to open at times, and if you're not careful, the paint could go flying and get everywhere like it kind of just did. So, yeah, I'm not perfect. <laughs> right now you've got your color of choice and you will take the brush and just start with the back to get things applied nice and easy then move your way down you will probably have to get some more from your paint bottle and it's really quite simple. It's not too difficult to do. And, oh, I forgot to mention, I started by covering, by spray painting um, Wraith, Wraith Bone on as my primer, which definitely is very helpful. Definitely recommend you get a primer. Now, here it is right here. Wraith Bone. So, yeah, it really helps to do that. I don't recommend painting without doing that. And I think I actually will make a future video on assembling and spray painting these guys because 
It's an important step, but no one really has anything on it. Alright. Finishing up this side. Now I've got this side. Get a little bit more paint. Alright, in videos, these guys appear larger than they actually are, so just be aware of that. Alright, finishing up. You will probably want to paint the underside of the robes, but you can, these probably will save that for later. I'll do that off camera, it's not really all that exciting. Alright, now I'm just finishing up. Gotta do this under part here too. It needs a bit some more paint. So, I personally am trying to build a Skaven army, and I'm gonna make tutorials on how to paint everybody. I think next I might be getting Night Runners because they seem like a pretty good next unit to paint. Super easy and fun, and all you'll really need is one more paint for them, which will be Black Templar. I don't have that paint yet, but that's really all you'll need, along with the guys, of course. <laughs> Alright, finishing up the quilt under the arms, and getting this. I probably will come back over with a second coat later, but again, that's not really something you guys might want to see. Alright, almost finished. Alright, now that we've finished the main part, this technically is finished. But if you want to take it a little bit further, then you will want to grab some Balthazar gold. Now first you have to make sure that your lead belcher has dried. If it's not dried, then that could be a problem. I recommend you wait longer than I'm waiting right now, but I'm a little impatient. You might want to wait um, maybe three minutes before you start painting over the lead belcher. So, again, technically he's finished, but if you just want to go a little bit further, then these steps will make him look a little bit nicer. Now make sure you get it really thin, because we're just going to do it a super thin little layer on the blade scoop. Alright. Now very carefully apply a tiny bit. You barely want to have any on it. I actually think my paint might be a little bit too thick. Now I'm going to this blade to both sides. This kind of makes it look a little bit more rusty and bronze, which I think uh, adds a very nice look to your skaven. Now plague monks are a great starting unit because they're just really great fighters. They do high damage, like really high damage, and they're not too difficult to paint. So very great starting unit if you want to start small. All right, now that we've finished with the bronze, we are going to let it sit for a moment before we go on to the next step. While I'm waiting, I'm going to get a little bit more Gilman's Flesh for some of the spots that I missed. Now, I'm going to make another video on assembling these guys because I know people probably would like to know how to properly assemble them. I know it is very hard to find out how on YouTube or anything. But it's not as bad as it seems. You just have to be able to sit holding the pieces together for maybe 40 seconds before you're able to let go and let it dry. And I'm getting the hand that I missed. I'm gonna apply a little bit more on the feet. Now, with the Skaven, you're gonna have a very large army with a lot of characters, so it's okay if you mess up a bit. They really, the mistakes aren't really gonna be noticed much. So now, 
I've pretty much done finished him. You can see I've got the bronze. But if you want to take it a step further, to make it just go over the top, take some wraithbone paint. Now with the wraithbone paint, we are going to take a very tiny bit on the tip of our brush, just a little bit. And very, very carefully put a, outline the edge of the blade. Now, once you have outlined it, it will look like it's kind of scratched. And just give me a moment to get a little bit more paint. make sure we outline it enough and it's okay if you miss a bit because you're actually going to want to put tiny streaks thinner than that one I just made there that way it makes it look like it's got scratches and he's been in some fights you could just go with the outline if you want that still works I'm still honestly figuring it out a little bit it can be kind of difficult you got to have good patience with these guys. If you really mess up on something, it's all right. You can wait for it to dry, then cover it with wraith bone, and then do it again once the wraith bone has dried. All right, now that that step is finished, we're going to let, leave it to dry for a few minutes, and I'll be right back for the next step. All right, now that we're back, we're going to complete the last step, and your... Skaven Plague Monk will be ready. Now I recommend you take your biggest brush for this. Because we're really not going to have to be very careful with this next step. Now, my favorite paint of all time, Agrax Earthshade. This has been called Magic in a Bottle by a lot of different people for a very good reason. It just takes this character who... You look at him, he looks a little bit like a cartoon character. And he looks a little plain, almost, right? So now, take the Agrax Earthshade. Give me a moment. There we go. And cover your brush in it. Don't get too much. Wipe a bit of it off. And then just completely cover him in every spot with it. Don't worry about, like, having too much really it's a little hard to have too much just make sure you get everything with it and it'll give it like this dirtier look and it just makes it look so much more realistic so easily and it really takes zero skill to be able to cover them with this now there still is such thing though as too much so if you see a lot of it pulling in one place use the brush to move it around a bit all right, now we're almost done. Let's just get a little bit more on the weapons. And we'll be good now. I'll come back after having let it dry, and I'll show you how it looks, and that'll be our finished product. All right, so it's almost done drying, but you can already see how it makes such a big difference. Like, look at the lines now on the cloak. They've got... A little bit of dirt and it kind of adds shadow and depth to the drawing or not drawing the painting and you can see it gets in some of the little cracks and just makes the creases more visible and it just makes such a huge difference i definitely think a grax earth shade is an amazing shade to have you don't even have to apply balthazar gold and wraith wraithbone to the sword you could just go with everything else and then just have agrax earth shade after you finish that and it just makes it look great so now we're pretty much finished and just a few easy steps well i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching and here's our finished product the guy in the middle i used a sharpie on to draw the symbol which there's nothing wrong with having to do that every once in a while. It's just too difficult sometimes with paints. 
but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe for more helpful tutorials on how to paint and assemble Skaven. And that way, I'll know that it's time to make some more videos. Thank you, and goodbye.